You're listening to Community Heroes Podcast featuring people sharing about their stories with their disabilities. And now for your hosts, Brandon and Pate. Welcome back to Community Heroes Podcast. In today's interview, I have the privilege and honor of interviewing Mia Shikowitz, an actress for Push Girl. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you doing, Brandon? I'm doing wonderful. Can you talk about how you knew what was your disability and how did it help you and define you? Yeah, so I developed my disability at age 15 and I... um, didn't really know the disability world before that at all. Um, And then one day I had a stomach ache and it got worse and I ended up at the hospital. And when I was getting x-rays taken, my legs were heavy. And um, after the x-rays, they said, well, we can't really find anything wrong with you. So it wasn't until a day later that they did an MRI. And when they did an MRI, they found that I had an AVM in my spinal cord that ruptured. So usually um, it is in the brain and fatal, but it could be anywhere in the body. Um, But it did rupture and cause nerve damage in my spinal cord. So at that point they said it was just like any other spinal cord injury. And I had to learn how to live my life in a wheelchair from then on. And um, yeah, at first I thought that seems like really difficult. And I didn't think that I was really going to be able to handle it, honestly, emotionally or physically at 15, you know, just my world just kind of turned upside down. Um, And then once I realized that I could still do whatever I wanted to do, maybe it'd be a little different in some ways, but because um, it didn't really change who I was as a person, I just kind of continued and and stayed on track and became more of who I am, if anything, now. And I'm really grateful for the fact that it opened up my world. And now I am part of the disability community and I appreciate it. Um, And yeah, I see it as a gift now. How is it like going to the University of Florida? And what was it like going through the sorority lifestyle? So University of Florida was um, a really big school and it was the first time I was going to go away Um, from home where nobody knew what had happened to me. They would just see somebody in a wheelchair. And so it was a a really big eye-opening experience for me to go off to college and uh, not really know anybody. And then um, I decided to rush a sorority and that was, you know, 16 houses that were not wheelchair friendly. And, um, and also the people that were running it were like, we've never had a person in a wheelchair do this before. So we have no idea what to expect. And, um, and neither did I, frankly, because I'd never done the experience before. Um, and it was pretty grueling. I mean, it's, it's very, it's a lot of talking and a lot of meeting a lot of new people, um, and going from house to house to house. But, um, what was amazing about it was, I think everybody beforehand was very hesitant, um, not thinking, oh my gosh, we don't have an accessible house or, you know, we don't know what to do with somebody in a wheelchair. And then when I came in, it was just myself. They were just like, wow, she's just like everybody else. Like, and um, even some of the houses ended up, you know, making, making it accessible for me during the process. So it was really, 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 really cool. And um, it opened me up for the real world. I mean, now that I'm in the the workforce in the real world, it's very similar. You know, you show up for an interview and they might not know you're in a wheelchair and, and you got to like, you know, go through that motion and, and make sure that you are who you are and you're making sure that everybody else is um, able to be comfortable with the fact that sometimes their place might not be accessible (laughs) and what are you going to do? So you work it out and it's a really big um, connecting experience with people. Looking back on it, it's funny. I think like, oh my gosh, those girls were like only 18, you know, and what a good experience for everybody. You know, we had a really good time and I met, you know, some of my best friends to this day through it. So. Of course, going to the University of Florida, what were some of your challenges and how did you overface them? going through the school system? Um, I would say at first it was more of a um, anticipated fear. Um, When I went to the campus the first time, I saw like some graffiti on like some, some place that like had something a little bit like derogatory about someone in a wheelchair or something. And I thought, oh my gosh, gosh, is this what it's going to be like? Like really having to, you know, um, figure out how to be accepted um, all the time and um, and trying to, you know, start my life. 
Um, and I think everything that ended up happening ended up working out. I really didn't have any challenges that held me back with the wheelchair. It was just kind of like any other college experience, to be honest. I mean, and it was kind of cool because all the people that I met and all the people I ended up living with, like nobody knew anyone in a wheelchair before me. So it was a learning experience for all of us together. And um, I can't think of any hangups in regards to the disability. I mean, it was a hilly campus. So sometimes I had to like, you know, be pushing uphill in the rain and stuff like that because it rained a lot. Um, but, but I would have to say like that, that was also really good because I'm athletic and it, it kept me in shape and, um, yeah, and just figured it out. I mean, there were, now that I think about it, there were some, cause there were, you know, there definitely were older buildings there and I'm, I'm sure there were some buildings. In fact, I think I remember now, maybe there was like one building that didn't have, you know, and, um, an up to code access or something for a class and they just ended up moving the class. Um, so yeah, so I really didn't have any things that stand out to me as, as something as a, as far as a, a barrier. How did you know that you wanted to get into the world of act acting? Well, when I first got paralyzed, I was in the hospital and I remember looking up at the TV in my room and thinking, gosh, like, I don't really know anybody <laughs> on TV that is in a wheelchair or somebody with a disability where I would know that it's okay. <laughs> and I realized like what a big influence that would be um, to, to see that on TV. And I thought like, wow, if I, if I had just seen that in, in mainstream media, then I wouldn't be so devastated about getting paralyzed. Cause I would have just been like, oh, well, so-and-so did it, you know, and I would have role models and I would feel like I would have a place in life, um, as far as society goes. And I just, because I didn't see that, I just thought, oh my gosh, this is such an isolating, um, event to happen to me. And that's how I pictured disability. I pictured it as a very isolating thing, um, in society. And, um, so I made it my mission kind of in that moment when I saw the TV, I was like, well, maybe I could do that someday. Like maybe I could go and, and, um, be in, in our entertainment or Hollywood and kind of, you know, push the needle a little bit and be a part of that. Um, because I knew it was going to be very important for, um, accepting of, of all differences and disability, especially. What was that process like for you going to Hollywood and getting adapted to the acting world? When I first moved to LA, it was to the year 2000. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, okay, you know, everything is going to just start and it's going to be super easy and disability is going to be represented and all this stuff. And I, and I remember um, going to, um, it was actually at the time, it was a government agency called the Media Access and um, Media Access Office. And they were the ones who were facilitating a lot of the casting for, um, for Hollywood for people with disabilities. And when I went there, I think it was for like a mixer or something, but I, I met um, a couple of people and one of um, the fellow actors that was there was just like, it's a slow process. <laughs> um, and, you know, we're all in it together and there's definitely progress, but, you know, we have a really long way to go. Um, so I kind of came in with a very naive perspective of like, okay, we just need to make it happen. And didn't really think on like the other aspect of it is that, Hollywood wasn't ready for it, you know? And um, and that was kind of unfortunate in the beginning because I realized, well, it's not just about our side of like honing our craft and becoming good actors. It was also about, you know, the Hollywood side being open to opening up casting for people with disabilities or in any diversity, frankly, um, it just wasn't done. So because it wasn't done and wasn't mainstream and they didn't think audiences would relate, um, they guess kind of, you know, marginalized those people within the media. And now I look back on it and I'm like, wow, we really have made a lot of progress since then. Um, we still have a long way to go, but things are starting to shift now. I mean, and that's what, 22 years later, <laughs> which is crazy to me, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I think finally now, um, one of the good things that have has come out of reality TV is, um, is that people have gotten used to seeing real people, real relationships, real, you know, family dynamics, stuff that isn't this fake kind of um, sitcom life that used to be in, in on TV is like now people are used to seeing real people and they want to see real people and they want to see diversity because that's the real world. 
So I think now that um, that's becoming more of something that audiences are expecting, Hollywood has had to step up their game and open up more on their end. So there's definitely been some progress more so recently in the last couple of years than in all of my time here in L.A. In 2012, what was it like getting your first start on the TV show Push Girl? So Push Girls was... Was um, kind of something that uh, fell into my lap. Um, my really good friend Angela Rockwood um, had been talking to um, some producers about uh, doing a project, and she had suggested that she had come up with this idea to have me and um, three of other of her girlfriends, who also happened to be in wheelchairs, you know, kind of form a um, kind of like a coalition, so to speak, and um, influence other people about showing that our wheelchairs are the least of our worries in life. And maybe we could like, you know, kind of blast that out to the mass media so that people would learn that disability is not scary. It's just a part of our life. And it's and it's a way that, you know, definitely describes us in some ways, but it doesn't define us. So um, when it first, when we first got offered it, I just remember um, being really nervous because um, I always, you know, was okay being an actress, um, but then also being a reality actress is a, com a completely different aspect of Hollywood in the sense that you're opening up your real personal life. And I've always been a private person. So for me, like opening up my world to, um, to the public like that was very scary for me. But what happened was I looked back on my childhood self at 15 and looked thought back to that moment that I looked up at the TV and thought, you know what, this is my opportunity, you know, like I'm not maybe how I actually pictured it, but this is the exact opportunity that I wanted to do when I was 15. So I thought, well, it's for a good reason and a good purpose. And this is, this is on my lap and got to say, yes, of course. Of course. What is the show Push Girl about? So Push Girls is about um, showing it's, it follows the life of five girls um, who happen to have um, spinal cord injuries. We all had it um, um, in different times of our life, but um, the other four girls were all in car accidents. And then I had obviously an AVM that paralyzed me. And it basically shows our life as women who have a very strong female friendship, a very good, positive female friendship in which we um, elevate each other. And we encourage each other to be the best people we can be. Um, so it's about positive female friendship, but it's also about showing that disability is not something that holds us back. Um, if anything, it pushes us to do more, which is why it's called Push Girls, um, because we get pushed by the um, by the motivation of making sure that we're continuing to do everything that we can do and finding new things that um, give us ability to do more. And then also we love to encourage other people, other people with disabilities and other people without disabilities. One of the beautiful things about the show was that it wasn't... Um, it wasn't shown just to people with disabilities. It was on, you know, mainstream media. And it, I would say most of our, our audience did not have a disability and they were very well um, educated about the subject, but also um, in a very positive and educating experience that was not um, nerve wracking for them. It was just more of like, wow, just something I know, you know, and that's, that's the way we educate in our everyday life. I think when you have a disability, most of the time you're educating somebody at some point, um, within your life, even, whether you like it or not, um, because it's, you know, it's not always that common that people get to interact with someone personally with a disability. So, um, it was kind of giving everybody an opportunity for that, whether they happen to meet someone with a disability in their life at some point, um, or know somebody, um, currently, whether they do or they don't, it was a show that, that showed, Hey, it doesn't matter. Like we all have differences and our wheelchairs happen to be one of the differences, um, that's visible in, in our lives. During the time when you were filming Push Girl, how was that like, obviously, filming it and having it broadcast on the broadcast where people such as yourself, like as you said, where you didn't grow up seeing people on TV and now you're, see, you're able to have people see you on TV? What has that been like? It, it was it was really eye opening for me in a lot of ways. Um, one of them, one of the ways was I got to connect with people on other levels. I thought it was more about 
the disability that I would be able to influence people the most on. Um, but because my story told other aspects of my life, um, including, um, substance misuse with my mother and a, um, a really a difficult relationship with her. There were other people that came out of the, of the word works that I actually knew that had experiences like that. And we had never even talked about it. So what I realized is the power of storytelling. And as human beings, the more we tell our stories and the more we listen to other people's stories, the more we can connect and the more we can, um, break down walls of judgment and we can um, find the commonality within us. And it just makes me feel more connected, I think, um, to humanity. And I think, um, I think that's what, what, what anybody, when they become vulnerable and they are not ashamed of something in their life and they open up their own selves to others, um, it just makes the world a little bit more a little bit more connected and and bigger frankly you start to realize like wow you know if if we all start connecting like this we can connect with anybody and um i think that that's the beautiful thing about being a human being on this planet is that we have that capability of course after starring in push girl how has it been like obviously in the real world going out and having people recognize you and and thanking you for giving the platform for disability I think um, getting recognized and and thanked for my part in being um, an advocate for disability, especially in the media and through Hollywood, like has that that was one of the greatest things about it. Um, having the ability to meet fans and also sometimes even you know just get recognized in public by random people. Um, but the amazing part about it was it was always such a positive and interpersonal experience with the fans they didn't the show is very um it's very intimate so i think that it's a little bit different than just being an actress on any other show it was something that people really resonated with and connected with and also sometimes they had you know even more questions and so it was always an amazing experience um to meet any any fan and still to this day like still sometimes get recognized so it's it's still you know an ongoing thing and it's it's really cool to see how um the impact of the show continues and um and will continue now so how's it been like obviously working with people with disabilities while on the show like Chelsea Hill um, Chelsea's amazing. Um, I'd say like every single girl on the show, um, we had a friendship before the show. And then after the show, we all even bonded even more, I think, um, because we had this very unique experience. And then also we got to see Chelsea kind of grow up, you know, she was, she was like a baby <laughs> when, when she started the show. And, and that was kind of the point you know, is to show like how we can mentor each other. Um, so being, being on the show and having the friendship with the girls is just continues, you know, we're still friends and, you know, we miss our angel Ati in heaven right now. Um, but you know, that will, that will never change that bond that we have. Um, it goes beyond this world and always will. Of course. How has it been like obviously being a motivative speaker along with a disability advocate? I love to speak about disability and being an advocate. I, I think that that's part of my purpose. And one of the reasons why um, I was actually um, a person that developed a disability, frankly, um, I do I do feel very spiritual about it. I feel that it, it happened to me for a reason. And one of the reasons is because it kind of fits my personality to go out and do that. <laughs> Um, when I'm speaking to audiences, whether they happen to be specifically for disabled individuals or for audiences that have no relation to disability, um, it doesn't matter. Every single audience that I ever I ever speak with gives me a whole nother experience of connecting with other people and making sure that I've been able to change something about their perspective in life and especially about disability. I have always felt that um, that we're a little bit misunderstood and then um, misjudged. And I think every time I get to speak and be an advocate, I am able to to break down those stereotypes and to uh, open up people's minds. So it's a gift to me. What has your experience been like going on shows like Ellen, the Good Morning American show? Um, I would say being on all the press shows were such an exhilarating experience. 
Um, one, because we knew that we were reaching even more audiences well, uh, worldwide, um, especially even um, audiences like from Good Morning America and Ellen have such a, you know, a huge dedicated fan base that it was really cool to know that we were reaching even more people. Um, it was interesting with Ellen because um, I think that there was a little bit of uh, I would say hesitancy on going some on some shows where we kind of there was a, a humor aspect to it. Um, you know, like Ellen is funny and um and we were able to like joke with her and stuff. But I think that um there was some hesitancy um and still is within Hollywood about comedy and disability is that people are afraid that audiences will feel like they're laughing at somebody with a disability, even if the person with the disability is making their own joke. Um, it, they're, I think they're worried that like the audiences are going to feel like, you know, they're put in like a precarious situation <laughs> or an uncomfortable situation. So I feel like sometimes that got left out um, in times where we could have in, infused more humor. Um, that's kind of something I'm a big advocate about now um, within Hollywood is specifically um, more representation of people with disabilities in comedy. Throughout your life and throughout your career, what quote would you recommend that best suits you into where you are now? Um, it's kind of, it's a quote that I actually came up with. It says, um, fear will disable you and courage will enable you. And the reason I say that is because um, when I first got paralyzed, I realized that it wasn't necessarily this disability that was going to disable me, you know, like the word disability has now ha have a new, has a new context. I think that has a lot of um, power behind it. Um, but there's also this um, negative context to the disabled. And I don't think that we are disabled. I think we are completely able and capable. Um, and um, so when I say fear will disable you, I think that every single person could be disabled by fear in life. Um, whether they happen to have a disability or not, it doesn't matter, but fear can hold every single person back. And that is um, is something that will, you know, keep, keep somebody from being who they truly are. And that to me is sad. <laughs> um, I wanna encourage more people to fight that fear and to be who they are no matter what. Um, especially whether they have barriers or anything that comes comes to their life that they think that they can't overcome in the moment. Um, but overcoming that fear will will lead them to to learning more about themselves and to being more of who they are and and taking on the the role that they're supposed to play in life. Um, so yeah, so that's how I, that's what I would say fear will disable you and courage will enable you. How have you used your platform to help bring awareness to disability awareness? I love to do things that are unexpected. So I love to use my platform to show people um, things that they aren't expecting somebody with a disability to do. Um, one of the things is dance, for sure. Um, I loved doing unexpected things in dance, lots of tricks, um, lots of things that I wouldn't have even imagined I could do. <laughs> Um, like even doing a backflip that, you know, we figured out how to do it at Infinite Flow Dance. Um, we're constantly pushing each other to figure out um, how to do things that that are completely outside the box. And um, and I love to show that the more that we all work together as people, as humans, um, the possibilities are endless and the ideas are endless and creativity is endless. And um, I love, love, love to show um, all those aspects about life and and also how to be the, the most that you can be regardless of having a disability, but specifically for people that have disabilities um, to show that there really are no limits and, and you got to just keep thinking outside the box. Who are some people that you look up to in the acting world? Well, that's a good question. Um, I'd say currently just um, on talent alone, I would say Meryl Streep. Her as an actress is phenomenal to me because she can literally play any role and just knock it out of the park. And that to me is just such so cool to watch. Um, and then as far, I think as like um, humanity goes specifically, I would say Audrey Hepburn, even though she's not alive anymore, she's still a role model for me. Um, she, she was not only a beautiful actress, um, but her as a person and everything that she accomplished um, with UNICEF and, and just, you know, helping the world when she had a platform to be able to do so. 
Um, she was just so gracious, humble, beautiful, and, um, and somebody that I, I definitely still look up to, um, and read a lot about her. And every time I see a picture of her, I'm like, Oh, Audrey. Um, yeah. So she's definitely a role model for me still. What are some of your favorite memories and moments as an actress? Some of my favorite memories, um, definitely have to do with being with the girls from push girls, uh, together. I think, um, some of the moments we had just filming, um, just funny moments or stuff that didn't even make it on the show. Um, we just had such a good time. We had such a good time together. Um, and then also going through Hollywood and some of the, the typical things that happen when you're on a show, you have to do like a lot of, um, a press and, and meeting with, um, television critics. And I think one of my favorite memories throughout that was that we went to the Television Critics Association um, as a panel. And sometimes they do that for um, each season. The networks will bring some of their upcoming shows. And, um, you know, we were warned ahead of time, you know, that the television critics are kind of jaded, you know, they've seen everything and, you know, we shouldn't expect much and they probably won't even pay attention. And, um, but it was one of the most exhilarating moments ever. They were so enamored um, with the concept of the show. Um, they, you know, it, you could hear a pin drop in the room and they got it. And that was the moment when we realized the show is not just something that we think is, is good. And that will, you know, make an impact. Like they really got it. And the questions that they asked us were right on and what we wanted them to ask. And, um, and they even said, you know, this is what the Kardashian should be in, in the sense that, you know, there's a, the, not only is it, a reality sense in a reality sense in a docu series, but it also has a huge educational aspect to it and um and in an, an encouraging aspect to it. And uh, why not? Why not watch something to make your life better? You know, um, a lot of people watch things because they want to make themselves feel better about themselves by seeing other people <laughs> that necessarily have um, more difficulty. But I think um, in Push Girls, it just shows that you know everyone can be their best, and I hope it encourages people in the best way. How's it been like obviously meeting your fans and having them know and recognize you? And what what has it been like obviously meeting fans with disabilities that also have the same aspirations to get into the acting world? I love seeing the younger generations coming up right now with disability. So much more enthusiasm and so much more um, confidence than I think I saw back in the day, so to speak, um, with my generation. Um, and I think that's partly because we are seeing more of it. Um, and so for me, you know, being able to be on Push Girls and having that experience of knowing that I was a little bit um, a part of, of making that happen is reminds me of that. Anytime I see one of the younger fans or, you know, one of the um, younger dancers or younger actresses or actors, coming up and um, having a disability and just being like, yeah, so what? I have a disability, <laughs> but I'm a dancer and I'm an actor. And like, I love seeing that because um, we didn't know what was possible when I was younger. We didn't know. Um, we weren't really given opportunities to be able to show what we could do. And now um, that, you know, other generations are already seeing that at such a young age, they're, they know that they have these abilities. And um, yeah, so every time I get to interact with um, somebody with a disability that's in the younger generation, I'm like, yes, uh, mission accomplished. <laughs> of course, do you have any future plans in the acting world? Any shows that you plan to appear on? Oh, yeah, I'm constantly working on new projects and um, stay tuned is all I can say. <laughs> um, I'm in, currently in a um, an acting group where we, we are always working on something new and also, you know, co continuing to audition for stuff now. Now there's so many more opportunities and so many more auditions for things that are coming up where the disability role isn't a necessarily about the disability only, but it used to be every single role that would come up would be like, oh, so negative and sad and, you know, just not representing what I want to represent. Um, what's the point? What's the point of continuing to push these negative stereotypes about disability in Hollywood? It's already been done. So, um, yeah. So my passion now is taking on roles specifically um, that or that happen to not have any focus on disability and show, you know, get in the room and audition for something that they had no idea someone with a wheelchair was going to come in on audition, you know? 
Um, so that's currently my, my projects and what I'm hoping to accomplish within the next phase of Hollywood right now. What advice would you give those people with disabilities looking to get into the acting world? I would say, number one, get with an agency or a manager that believes um, that that disability should be in in the media and in Hollywood and that they have the, they're on the same pl plane. Um, I think that, you know, a lot of people sometimes will say they got with an agent or manager who, you know, took them on because they're just like, OK, you know, someone with a disability, but they're only thinking about them specifically for disability. And I think that kind of limits um, the possibility. So my biggest advice would to get with the right team um, and also to either move to a place that has a lot of entertainment, um, visit, and then also link up with people through social media. If you don't happen to live near a town that has a lot of it, um, there is plenty of, of people, especially in LA here that have disabilities that are in Hollywood that would love to embrace somebody that's either thinking about getting in Hollywood or um, doesn't know doesn't know how and they just want some advice. Um, definitely, if you want to be into that industry, um, make connections and um, and don't be shy. Don't be shy to reach out. You know, it, there's there's plenty of opportunities to be able to reach out to people now with, with social media, which is the beauty of it, in my opinion. Um, I happen to not be so great at posting on social media, but if you do reach out, I most likely will respond and would love to help anybody that, that ever needs any advice or, or encouragement throughout, uh, going through the entertainment industry with a disability. Where can my listeners find you at on social media? So you can find me on social media. Um, um, it's my name. So it's really hard to spell. <laughs> But um, my first name, Mia, and then last name is Shaikwitz, S-C-H-A-I-K-E-W-I-T-Z. Um, and I have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I think that's about, oh, and Twitter, I think too. Um, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not the best on it, but I am on them. So <laughs> eventually I'll probably, I'll probably see everybody on there. Um, if it, if not like daily, like some of my friends are really good at it. Um, but yeah, that's definitely a way to contact me if you'd like to. Thank you again, Mia Shikowitz, for your interview and best of luck in your future in the acting world. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Brandon. Best of luck to you and to everybody listening. Thank you. You can find Community Heroes on Facebook at Community Heroes, Instagram com Community Heroes underscore NC, Twitter at com underscore heroes, and you can find us on YouTube at Officially Community Heroes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Mia Shrakowitz, for your interview and best of luck in your future. My pleasure. Thank you. You are watching Community Heroes. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Community Heroes on social media and on YouTube.